Okay, let's talk about activated charcoal, specifically for medical use. Right. So we're talking about a powder. A very fine powder. Yes. And you mix it with liquid, usually water. To make a kind of suspension or a slurry. Exactly, a slurry. And that's what the patient drinks. Crucially, you don't ingest the powder dry. No, absolutely not. That wouldn't be safe or effective. Got it. And sometimes it's already mixed. I've heard about combinations with sorbitol. That's right. It often comes pre-mixed with sorbitol. What does sorbitol do in this context? Well, sorbitol is a cathartic. Okay, so it speeds things up, like a laxative. Precisely. It acts as a laxative. And the overall goal here, with the charcoal. It's all about removing toxins that have been ingested. Uh-huh. Specifically, absorbing them in the gastrointestinal tract before the body can absorb them. So adding sorbitol, what's the benefit there? Does it help with the toxin removal? The thinking is that it speeds up the elimination of the charcoal and the absorbed toxins. Ah, uh, I see. Pushes everything through faster. Exactly. Gets it out of the system more quickly. But uh, there must be downsides to adding a laxative like that. Oh, definitely. It's not without issues. Like what? It can cause nausea, sometimes vomiting. Which isn't ideal if someone's already ingested something toxic. No, it complicates things. And abdominal cramping is also pretty common. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now, activated charcoal also comes in other forms, doesn't it? Like pills. Yes, you can find it in capsules and tablets. Are those any good for, say, an acute poisoning situation? Generally, no. They're considered less effective for that specific purpose. Why is that? Well, they just don't work as quickly. They take longer to break down. Exactly. They need to disperse first, and then the absorption process starts. It's slower compared to the suspension. So the liquid slurry form gets to work much faster. Much faster. Speed is often really important in poisoning cases. Makes sense. Okay, a really important distinction then. Regular charcoal versus activated charcoal. Can someone just, you know, use charcoal briquettes from their grill? Absolutely not. That's incredibly important. And it's not a safe substitute in any way. A huge difference then. What makes them so different? It's all about the processing. Activated charcoal goes through a special process. Activation, I assume? Yes. And this process creates an incredibly porous structure. Think millions of tiny pores. And those pores increase the surface area. Massively. Dramatically increases the surface area. And that's key for adsorption. That's the entire point. More surface area means much greater capacity to absorb substances like toxins. And regular charcoal just doesn't have that. Nope. It lacks that complex, porous structure. It hasn't been activated. So using regular charcoal is dangerous, partly because it just won't work effectively. Correct. It won't absorb much of anything compared to activated charcoal, and perhaps even worse. Why? It might contain harmful impurities or other chemicals from its manufacturing process that you really don't want to ingest. Oh, right. Things you definitely don't want in your system, especially if it's already compromised. Precisely. So the key takeaway really is this unique structure of medical activated charcoal. Exactly. That highly porous structure is what maximizes the surface area. Which maximizes its ability to trap those toxins. That's it. Ads adsorption capacity is key. So just to reiterate for everyone listening, only use medical grade activated charcoal for these situations. Absolutely critical. Regular charcoal is not an alternative. It could be dangerous, and it won't be effective. Correct, on both counts. 